Um, so let's talk failure. Um, so I was playing 24 hours a day with, I don't know, probably five different bands. I got home and uh, checked my, that was still when you had a voicemail box. Um, and there was a voicemail from Tom Morello on there. Um, there was a voicemail from uh, uh, one of the guys from Wool. And there was a voicemail from Slash Records. Everyone telling me about this band that I'd never even heard of. Um, and uh, like I did at the time, I said yes to everything. I rode my bicycle down to Slash Records, which was probably about six blocks away, down near like Melrose and Gardner. And uh, I picked up their demo tape, which was this little brown box. And you opened it up and on the cover it had the frog going like that. And it had the first three songs of Magnified. I wound up talking to Ken like maybe a day or two later. We set up an audition for uh, the following weekend. Um, and I just went back to what I was doing. You know, never listened to the demo. And come Sunday, I get this heated phone call from Ken. At first, you know, I'd only spoken to him one other time, so I didn't recognize the voice. And he was pretty upset that I didn't show up to the audition, which I just completely forgot about. Um, and I assured him that I was very sorry. I just spaced out and, and immediately tried to set up another audition. Um, and he's like, well, that's not going to happen. I'm getting ready to leave town to go to Scotland to hang out with my, uh, my girlfriend. And I was like, well, why don't I just get together with the bass player? And he was a little stung. He was like, oh, you can do that? And I was like, well, yeah, why not? Bass and drums, man. Um, so he was like, all right. So we set up another audition for the following weekend, and I finally opened the tape and listened to it and was just immediately floored. Um, I was floored because it was like nothing I'd ever heard before. You know, you got to understand this is 1993. Um, you know, there was a lot of stuff like Nirvana and Melvin's and, you know, a lot of the stuff, Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, you know, that's kind of what rock sounded like at the time. Um, and this was just so well produced and so heavy. Um, heavy like an emotional heavy, not a heavy riff metal guitar, but just like it really weighed on you when you listen to it. Anyway, I had two mixed feelings going on that, you know, one, I had blown this, and two, I've got to get in this band. So I checked it out and I learned the parts, which were fairly simple. Um, they were different. Um, from a drummer's perspective, which, you know, at the time I didn't know why. Uh, but I learned them and I went out to the audition and I think we made it through the first two songs, Let It Drip and, and Frogs, and uh, Cam, or Greg was like, awesome. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, awesome, you got it. So we went in the office and we called Ken in Scotland and Greg was like, we found our drummer. And uh, about two weeks later, Two, maybe three weeks later, we went on tour with Tool for the next eight months all over the world. Um, and during that time, I would find out back to, you know, why these drum parts were so weird. They had, they had a drummer, um, which is one of the first things the new drummer always asks, what happened to the old drummer? Um, they had this guy, he was in the band for like maybe a month, two months, um, and they had worked on these songs, they were going in to record, and they got in there and he totally just choked. Um, and, you know, they just weren't really, they were kind of stunned. And Ken, Ken and Greg, you know, just a little backstory, like, they have a severe, severe work ethic. They don't fall into the same category as most bands and how they approach their career. Very, you would think that they were approaching a Fortune 500 country or uh, company. They were very country. <laughs> um, they're really, really, really serious. It's got nothing to do with the external stuff and everything to do with this internal drive to just absolutely every note and every hard work, perfect, perfection. Um, a little too serious at times. Um, more so than any band I've ever experienced before or after. Um, but back to what I was saying, the drum parts, when the drummer couldn't record the parts, they went in and Greg uh, basically 
recorded the drum tracks by doing it a track at a time. Like playing the hi-hat part for the song and then going back and playing the snare part for the song and then going back and playing the tom parts for the song and then going back and you get the gist of what I'm saying and creating a drum track like that. 